Our, uh, our last talk in this section here is going to be talking, uh, going to have Dr. Stephen Small. He's the chair of the Department of Neurology, and he's going to be talking to us a lot about sports concussions and the effects thereof. Dr. Small. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, everybody, for coming. It's really terrific. Um, so I'm going to end the session now for the next 20, 30 minutes or so talking about sports concussion. I'll try to be upbeat about it at the same time as uh, give you some, uh, a, a little bit of uh, realities here. Um, what, uh... Oh, great. So um, the first thing we'll do is take a true-false test. Um, I don't know if everybody should just scream out what they think the answer is or raise their hands or whatever, but um, let's start with uh, number one here. A concussion is an injury caused by physical trauma. How many yeses? How many noes? Okay, we're good. That's true. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, I better focus on this here. Um, how about the next one? I'm trying to parallel process, not working, um, which means I fail when a mic yes is memory tester. <laughs> uh, concussion is different from other head injuries, and the concussions always have loss of consciousness. False. Any true? A couple of people. Yeah, so that's, um, that is actually false. You don't have to have loss of consciousness, and that's a big deal. Many people traditionally thought that concussion uh, in, in, in this, that, that you had to have a loss of consciousness to have a de definition of concussion. Um, true or false, a concussion is actually a brain injury. <laughs> How many falses? Yeah, it's true. Concussion is a brain injury. Um, hopefully it's not a permanent brain injury, but it is a brain injury, okay? Concussions occur primarily in football and rarely in other sports. False. <laughs> <laughs> Concussions occur primarily in professional sports and rarely in amateur sports, such as scholastic collegiate. I guess it's a highly select audience. <laughs> Okay, I think this might be the last one, but I can't, I'm not sure here. Um, many athletes who have had their bell rung or get shaken up actually have had concussions. True. If an athlete has a concussion in a game but has no loss of consciousness, he or she can return to the game once they feel okay. False. So um, one of the things I want to point out um, related to this, you guys obviously, uh, you, you got about 99% in this test, um, which is more than I had about six months ago when Jim Hicks got me interested in this topic. Uh, I, I, didn't under, I didn't even know these answers uh, six months ago. Um, but this is something that's very important, I think. If any, are any of you sports trainers or um, physical therapists or things like that? So many times if you ask someone, Do you have a con did you have a concussion? Uh, the answer will be no, I didn't have a concussion. In fact, we did a survey. I'll tell you a little about our survey later. Uh, Jim Hicks and I did a survey of um, uh, water polo players, past, present uh, um, water polo players. And some of them answered, yes, I've had concussion playing water polo. And some, there were a few very vehement, we never ever had a concussion. Not only that, I never even saw a concussion in anybody in the whole time I was playing water polo. These are people, masters players, which means that they're, you know, they're, they can be 50, 60, 70 years old. Um, and the reason is because instead of seeing concussions, they saw a lot of people who got their bell rung. And they saw a lot of people who got dinged or a lot of people who saw some stars. And even in boxing, you know, you don't get concussed or get brain injury, you get knocked out, okay? It's not, you know, when you hear Howard Cosell or whoever the modern Howard Cosell is narrating a, 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 a boxing match, you don't hear, oh, he's down, traumatic brain injury. <laughs> you know, you, you, you just don't, you know, you don't, you don't hear that. <laughs> so um, what, what is a traumatic brain injury? Okay, what is a traumatic brain injury? Traumatic brain injury is an alteration in brain function or other evidence of brain pathology caused by an external force. 
Um, tra uh, traumatic brain injury, injury uh, traditionally has been divided into mild, moderate, or severe types of brain injury. Important to know that concussion is mild traumatic brain injury. Those are the same thing, okay? Um, in the neurologic literature, in the literature from uh, uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation, the literature in neurosurgery, it's widely acknowledged that these are the same thing. There are some coaches and other sports officials who would rather use the term concussion rather than mild traumatic brain injury because it's a, a less scary term. But it's, there's a consensus that in fact concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury. Um, they're interchangeable terms. This is um, from um, the Lancet Neurology. Concussion and mild TBI are interchangeable terms to describe a traumatically induced physiologic disruption of brain function resulting from the head being struck or striking an object or the brain undergoing an acceleration and deceleration. It includes at least one of the following, loss of consciousness, but see, that, that's not required because if you have amnesia of less than a day, amnesia is memory loss, um, transient confusion or transient neurological abnormalities, whether on uh, physical examination or, um, or radiologically, um, not requiring surgery. Once you require surgery, you're not mild anymore, obviously. Um, concussion in sports, it's very interesting. Concussion is widely under-recognized. Obviously, you've read the newspapers the last year, it's becoming more recognized. It's becoming more um, clear that concussion's a problem. Um, but we, we know that concussion statistics are gross underestimations. Um, the epidemiology of mild traumatic brain injury is really not known. The CDC and the World Health Organization suggest the actual numbers of total um, uh, traumatic brain injuries may be 10 times higher than what is reported. And, and here we have the, one of the examples, you know, people who've had their bell rung and people who got stunned or shaken up or whatever are not being reported. If they don't go to the emergency department, they just go home and they, you know, uh, work it off or sleep it off or whatever, they're not getting reported. And so we really don't know the incidence of this. There is there are estimates by people who are trying to prognosticate, but it's purely speculation uh, that maybe as many as uh, one and a half to four million or so sports-related concussions annually occur in the U.S. That's sports and other recreation, however you define it. Um, but um, th you know, the, the point I made a second ago is that many concussions don't come to medical attention. In sports with comparable rules played by both genders, soccer, lacrosse, water polo, for example, women have twice the rate of concussion as men. And we don't know why this is. There are a lot of speculations having to do with neck strength, having to do with um, headaches. Uh, headaches, as you, you might know, migraines are more common in women than men. There's a bunch of reasons that people have speculated, but no one knows why that's true. Um, this, um, we just had the, uh, the World Cup in soccer, and you saw the, the, the I'll actually show a video of it if I have time, um, that th there was concussion uh, in, in the women's uh, semifinal. So let's talk a little about sports concussion. I'm gonna have a little, I'm taller than somebody, that's incredible. Is that you, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Never happened to me before. Um, so let's talk a little about sports concussion. Um, I'll, I, this is going to be a little bit. Uh, um, it's going to be a little bit in your face. I'll show a few videos, um, uh, but I'll, we'll talk about sports concussion. Um, so, um, do you have? Uh, are we connected to audio back there? Yes. Okay. Um, so um, before I get into this, let's just uh, play the play the thing there. No, not that one, the, the sound, yeah. No, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to play the sound. Okay, play the sound. Because I want to be upbeat before I'm downbeat. This is the upbeat part. It'll stop in a second. So, Steeler fans? 
So, as you know, American football is an incredibly popular, the most popular sport in the country. It, it uh, is a, you know, multi-billion dollar injury. It, you know, Sundays and... <laughs> Trillion? You said it was a multi-billion dollar injury. Did I say injury? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a... I study language disorders and... Uh, <laughs> Those of you who are Freudians, you know, I'm changing my view. I mean, I, d I am one who has always loved football, but I am, I am a little bit worried uh, increasingly about um, protecting the players. And uh, so sorry for the Freudian slip there, which I imagine it was. Um, but so the, so the multi-billion or trillion dollar industry, I thought you were going to, I thought I said, I thought I said billion and you were going to correct it to trillion because it, it but um, this now has some, uh, you know, there's some obvious implications of um, the, the violence in football and, and how we are viewing it, particularly as a neurologist. I grew up with uh, football. I grew up loving football, watching it, and, and now I'm having questions about what we can do to protect these players more. And um, so why don't you, um, can you show the video again? So this is my Pittsburgh Steelers at a bad moment here. Um, Okay, and so you can see this is an example of what happens every Sunday many times, um, unfortunately. Um, this is also, as you know, this is present in um, uh, college football. Do you want to hit that one too, please? Okay. Um, it, this was such a big deal. Um, this is not a new big deal. So this, this big deal um, has been present for a while. In uh, 1905, um, uh, President Teddy Roosevelt brought together the coaches of the major sports teams, uh, major football teams of that time. Um, who do you think had the major football teams in 1905? The Ivy League, yeah. Um, so, um, you know, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, et cetera, um, brought the coaches together to the White House and demanded that they end the violence. Why was it such a big deal in 1905? Because in, in, the, in the college football season in 1905, there were 18 deaths and 159 severe injuries on the football field. And so Teddy Roosevelt said, you got to fix that or I am going to ban football. And um, what happened, the coaches did get together and they did make the game significantly safer. And in fact, that was the beginning of the, um, the NCAA. And uh, here's some, I oh, there was some Ivy League football uh, from that time. Um, but this is not just a problem with American football. And um, uh, if, you, if you could hit the video here, we'll take a look at um, an example from men's soccer. Okay. And uh, if we do the next slide, um, women's soccer as well. This one many of you saw on TV last summer probably. So there was a, there was a contact by a ball in the head, but also then the two heads. And um, so that was on TV. That was internationally broadcast all over the world to probably billions of, of people. Um, and as I mentioned, women's soccer has a higher risk of concussion than men's soccer. So what are the rates of concussion in sports? This is from the NCAA, so this is collegiate numbers. And the rate of um, concussion in sports, you, you can imagine what they are. Wrestling, football, uh, ice hockey, field hockey, soccer. And look at, again where women's soccer is versus men's soccer. Um, and you can see that uh, uh, throughout. So these are the sports that are... Um, that are thought by the NCAA to have the highest rate of concussion. Is there anything missing there that's very popular in Southern California? So um, this is what, we'll get into the answer to that in one second. I thought it was this slide, but it's the next slide. Um, it, it looks to the NCAA like these are the most um, uh, particularly susceptible sports to concussion. And the question is, are, are, uh, are there other sports and recreational activities that um, are involved? So I got, this is a personal story uh, because I'll show you on the next slide the whole story, but this is a, a friend of mine who lives in Michigan whose son does play water polo. Um, so this is gonna be, is there a pointer here? Yeah. So yeah, take a look right around here, okay? 
Um, I'll, I'll leave this on while you, while you play the video and I'll show you. Um, go ahead, play the video. This is a high school uh, water polo match. And there's a video, can you keep it going or we got a problem? Keep it going, we got a problem. Okay, did you see that? You can, uh, you wanna bring it, bring it back and show that once more time, one more time. Yeah, bring, yeah, just the middle somewhere, yeah. Okay, that's fine. So keep an eye over here. When I push this, does it stop? Is that what's happening? No? P can you push it again, make it go? I won't touch this. There you go, boom, okay. So, um, yeah, this is very common, and this is the, um, the story, this is the story. Um, the story is, um, this is uh, from a friend of mine who, who works at the University of Michigan. He's a, um, actually an imaging scientist. Um, and this is what, his name's Doug. Uh, my son tries to put up his hand to block the shot on goal, but can't get his hand over to protect his head. He appears mostly okay immediately afterwards. He plays until the next stoppage of the game, about two minutes, when the coach pulls him out and doesn't let him go back into the game. He starts getting a headache and after the game, his mom calls me, I'm at a conference, and shortly thereafter, I call you in the middle of the night in Europe. He misses two days of school with a headache, sees the neurologist on the second day and starts uh, protocol. He struggles with schoolwork for most of the next week. He gets clearance to resume full contact practices and to play in games on the 13th day, seems okay in school at about the same time. So this is an extremely common story that happens probably hundreds of times a day in Orange County. Not, not from water polo exclusively, but from all concussion. And um, this is a, a friend of mine who knows I'm a neurologist and called me and said, what do I do? And I got him in touch with a, a sports medicine physician because his son did not get cleared up immediately. He wasn't all better the next day. It took a couple of weeks. And so we'll talk about that uh, for a second here. So um, this is what the uh, NCAA says are the impact expectations by sport. And you can see that they list um, soccer and football and so forth, lacrosse in the top category. Um, they do list water polo as a contact sport, but I don't think they realize the degree of collision and the degree of contact that actually occurs in water polo. And then others that have uh, limited contact. Um, Signs and symptoms of concussion, um, many of you know these. Uh, the biggies are headache, nausea, um, balance problems, dizziness, um, things like that. Um, feeling foggy, having memory, memory problems. And there's also a whole uh, emotional side, irritability and other sorts of um, cognitive, cognitive factors that people have, as well as uh, sleep disturbances. Um, a big problem is when the concussion does not resolve all by itself within a few weeks. Now, sometimes most concussions will get better. The symptoms will get better within a few weeks, um, but sometimes they don't. And when they don't, then specialized care is, is usually uh, helpful because the specialists know how to take care of the long-term manifestations. And, and many times you can get rid of these post-concussive sy symptoms, but sometimes it will take months and months and months to get rid of them. Um, Concussion symptoms usually resolve within a month. Sometimes they can be persistent. There is an overlap. I just heard a talk by a psychiatrist who talked about uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and some of the emotional and cognitive issues that, that are involved in post-traumatic stress disorder overlap with the post-concussive uh, disorder. Careful management of activities, man careful management of return to work or school, um, return to learning, which doesn't have to happen at the same time as a return to school. You have, uh, people can go back to school, children can go back to school, but not be demanded to take tests, not be demanded to, to participate in these sorts of um, uh, evaluative uh, activities, um, and symptoms by sports medicine uh, specialists. Um, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, I have to mention it, it is not very common. There are 63 reported cases in the world literature of cro chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Now you've heard a lot about it. This is what a couple of the football players have been diagnosed with after autopsy. The most famous one from our region is Junior Seau who played for the San Diego Chargers. And um, 
Uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy is a serious brain disease on path pathologic evaluation. It looks something like Alzheimer's disease, although there are differences. And these people, as you know from the case of Junior Seau, if you're reading the papers, Junior Seau took his own life. And he took his own life probably because of damage to the frontal cortex of his brain, the frontal part of his brain that is mediating some of his moods. And, um, but the, the important thing is that CTE is quite rare still, and there are ways to prevent it from happening. The people so far who have been diagnosed with chronic traumatic encephalopathy are people like Junior Seau, who had concussion after concussion after concussion after concussion, and having multiple concussions is a risk. Multiple concussions, particularly within a short time, is a particular risk for having long-term problems, not necessarily this severe long-term problem, but having long-term problems. Um, doesn't happen commonly, it's important to know. Biology suggests that a second TBI shortly after an initial TBI can lead to more serious and persistent injury. A third traumatic brain injury in the same time period, it has very, very severe metabolic uh, consequences, having three um, uh, TBIs within a, a short succession. Uh, multiple, uh, well, I say that here. Uh, new regulations at the professional college and scholastic levels should have a major preventive impact. So people are worried about this, people are working on this. Prevention, we need to, we need to do more to prevent, uh, prevent these things. Now, I love sports, I love participating in sports for all the reasons Mike Yassa mentioned and others. <laughs> and, uh, um, and I love watching sports and I'm not here to tell you that we need to stop people from doing these sports, even stop our children. My children played these sports. We don't even wanna stop our children, but we do, oh, sorry, but we do need we do need some help, and what we do need is we need more diligent referees in water polo. That could go a long way um, in some other sports as well. We need rule enforcement, more protective rules so the rules can change, and the NFL, as you know, has changed some of the rules. Better protective headgear, wider use of protective headgear, early assessment of injury, and then carefully stage return to play at the appropriate time and not before the appropriate time. So when the, when the sports doc or the family doc on the field tells you, no, your child cannot go back, cannot go to the cheerleading regional, um, you know, regional competition because she just you know, got hit on the head because she fell on the ground, she can't go to regionals, and you've been looking forward to regionals all year, the answer is, Trust what the doc says. Don't let her go to regionals. I use cheerleading as an example. Most people don't realize that cheerleading is, uh, has a, a, you know, a risk of this as well. So um, I'm, pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much done. I just want to tell you um, when Dr. Hicks, who's organized this uh, symposium, um, introduced me to some of these uh, issues, um, we decided that we would do a, a little study of, um, of, of various sports, and we've done some um, work in soccer and in water polo, looking at the brain sequelae of concussion. And I'll tell you just a little about our water polo study for one minute. Um, we, we sent a survey out to 40,000 members of USA Water Polo to ask them about what kinds of concussion, head injuries, other sorts of um, trauma they might have experienced playing water polo uh, because we, um, uh, Dr. Hicks has, uh, um, had some children who played this sport and knew that there was a risk here that was underreported. The NCAA doesn't report it. And so um, we got a lot of responses. Um, we got about uh, 1,500 of them were completed responses. And what we found in a, in a nutshell is that the lifetime concussion prevalence in water polo is quite high and it's particularly high in goalies. Um, this is um, lifetime concussion uh, prevalence for all people who, who played. Um, and uh, finally, the, um, if, you, if you break it down, um, you, can, you can see that in fact the college and um, master's level um, are, um, are, are more risky than high school. So if your child plays, um, does water polo in high school or in elementary school, the risk is much lower than college and Olympics, for example, which are much greater. So, um, oh, and um, yeah, who gets, who gets injured? Interestingly, of course, goalies. Why do goalies get injured? When do you think they get injured? Do they get injured during games? Practice. So here's, you know, we're talking about prevention. We're talking about allowing us to all play our favorite sports. Why not have the goalie wear some sort of helmet during practice? Why not somehow protect the goalie during practice? During the game, it's a different story. During the game, 
it's the uh, two meter defender who's standing in front of the goalie who gets the ball, but not at the high, not as high a rate as the as the um, as the goalie. So um, that's all I have to say. Uh, take home messages: a concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury. Loss of consciousness is not needed for diagnosis. I thought you wouldn't know that, but you already did. Concussions in sports recreation are highly prevalent, um, and certain sports are known to have risk, but in fact, there are other sports that have risks as well. I mentioned cheerleading, for example. And prevention of concussion and long-term effects are absolutely key. Head protection, vigilant refereeing, and rule changes in the immediate term, long-term, give it time, gradual return to sports, school, and work. And uh, that's all, I'm happy to take a couple of questions. You guys already knew all the answers, though. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. How's he doing? Well, he's doing fine, but I, I definitely know. Is, his, is, he, is, he, um, is there any evidence based on talking to him that he had a, a um, that he has a problem? I could say that he is a so the one thing about concussion, so there are a couple of issues, okay, we can talk, we can talk offline, but a um, couple of issues are uh, concussion is not associated typically with a lot of long-term MRI changes uh, on imaging. There can be some, there can be some, um, but one of the definitions is you don't see very much. Now, um, we, the three of us who gave this little symposium here are all brain imagers, so we, we have, you know, specialized research sequences could, might be able to pick something up. Um, but you don't go to the doctor unless you have a problem, um, and uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't ask for trouble. Um, you know, he, um, having a concussion um, is usually fine if you, you know, you stay out for a week or two or three, and, um, you know, uh, but um, I, I wouldn't ask for trouble, personally. Do you have a question? Yeah. Same question, okay. Could, I don't see where you are. Who's talking? Back right. Raise your hand. Okay, thanks. What is the X Games? Is that mixed martial arts or what is that? Oh, skateboard, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if anybody's looking at that. I don't know, Jim Hicks might know. I don't know. I don't know if anyone's looking at that, but, you know, these are all comparable, you know, comparable, comparable sorts of, you know, acceleration, deceleration injuries, uh, impact injuries, and, um, I know those guys wear helmets, uh, which is a good thing. Um, helmet technology, we're working on that at UCI as well. We want to improve safety, and helmet te not all helmets are equivalent, so we're working on helmet technology. We're working on a lot of things at UCI, not me personally. I don't think there's any evidence that that's a problem. Uh, <laughs> you no, know, but, but you know, she's pointing out a very important point, which is um, in children, um, there's some, some parents who, uh, when they're, you know, uh, misbehaving, uh, will shake their children, um, and that, that is a, a life-threatening uh, process. Um, I don't think recreational bungee jumping is comparable to that. Question in the middle of the back there. Im is this impact? Yeah, and so is that a uh, good way to kind of get an, uh, an idea? If I don't have a concussion, I'm a night player. And I come in, I take this exam, I see bruises, I get the placement. And then what you try to do, if I get a concussion and I take the exam again, then you try to compare yeah. how I did then. 
So that exam impact is one of the companies. There are about five companies that will market this equipment, this, these uh, programs to you. And um, uh, they're all adequate. None of them are great. And um, the kids can game them if they want. So if you don't want to ever run into any trouble, you just do really badly at the beginning of the season, and you never have, you never have to worry about getting taken out of a game. Um, so, you know, um, you got to be careful. It's not a deep neuropsychological evaluation, but it's certainly better than nothing, and making sure the kids actually pay attention and do it is probably helpful. Yeah. Are you, do, are you a football coach or? Uh, soccer, track, and field. Oh, okay. Track and field are probably pretty safe. Are we done? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'd uh, like to thank Dr. Small for a fantastic talk. And I can also give, give him, uh, you know, maybe one more anecdote. One of my favorite quotes of all, I also love football, of, of John Madden of all time. Somebody had gotten hit on the field, was knocked out, and he says, well, you know, at least it's only a head injury. It's nothing important like a knee. Thank you, John. We love you dearly.